today you are here for a two-in-one talk by one by one three. So let me just start off with um, a little bit about my education of gaming. I create games for teaching uh, conservationists and here are some of my games. The conservation genetics casino where students have to bet and maintain a heterogeneous or most colorful population before it becomes extinct. And another game on camera trapping where, sorry, this is cash commerce conservation. The idea here is they take on different roles as stakeholders in managing the forest. And also another game on camera trapping. So they put their camera traps in the forest and they collect data on cloud levels and thereafter analyzing the density. This game is widely available, is on the ecosystem in UK and students have to create a food web or destroy it using human impact. So have a look at the uh, uh, teacher's um, website so it's to download it for free yeah, and you can play with your kids as well with our tutor. So before I begin my story, let's see what's our mission for today. Save the clouded leopard. Your mission is to bring the clouded leopards to their preferred habitat. Here we have a really nice forest with high elevation, some drainage, little fishes, and these are your two little clouded leopards. And all of you have slips of paper on your chest, right? Well, not all of you. There's one set per pair that you have with you, okay? So okay. you can discuss and make friends with the person beside you. And how it works is that there are eight questions, eight multiple choice questions, and four options. You just have to raise up your option that you think is right after the bell rings. If majority of you are right, what we're going to do is move the clouded efforts towards their preferred habitat. Unfortunately, if majority of you are wrong, what we're going to do is cause deforestation, and if there's no forest, then your clouded leopards might be dead at the end. So, can you save these vulnerable animals? Do any of you have cloud, um, know what the cloud leopard is? No? Have you seen one before? Yes. Or pictures? Yes? No, I've seen it one. <laughs> Great. In the jungle. Thank you. So, a cloud leopard is so, so called because of its patterns on its coat. You can see it's rather club like It's one of the more recently discovered villages among all the carnivores that we know in the forest, and therefore, not a lot of studies has been done on it. There are two studies in Thailand about its density estimates and when it comes out to forage, forage. However, other than that, we no, do not know a little too much about this habitat use of the cloud and leopard. So you came here for a reason to, after reading the title of my talk, this is your first question. What do you think my research question is? Is it that environmental variables that determine the habitat use of the clouded leopard? Or is it that the density of the clouded leopard, or we want to estimate it across the peninsula of Malaysia? How the clouded leopard interacts with other forest cats like the leopards, leopard cat, and even the marble cat? Or lastly, when does the clouded leopard come out to forage? Is it during the dusk? the dawn, the day, or the night. So this is a question for you. You have 20 seconds to decide your options. And once I ring the bell, you can reset your options. Majority right or majority wrong? Ten more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's look at what we've got. Options up, please. There's one A, B, C, D. Oh. <laughs> that's, that is not, that's bad hedging. That's not bad. We're just betting, you know, whichever is right. So we indeed have a majority of A, and that's why you are here to listen on the talk on where the habitat of the, what's the preferred environment for the cloud leopard. So I'm going to move the cloud leopards into the drainage itself. Okay, so they are they are right, very swimming across the river at the moment. So I use the data from nine different surveys across Peninsula Malaysia. Um, most of the surveys were done to for tiger studies. 
Um, however, they also capture clouded lambents as part of their camera traps. So all these are camera traps, they have placed the cameras in the forest and when the animal walks past, it snaps a photo of the clouded leopard. This is my field site over there, the green one, and the rest are conducted over multiple years from 2012 to, to sorry, 2011 to 2016. So very different surveys at different years. So we have 890 camera trap stations utilized in this study, which is great. And what do you think is which of the following is not a novel part of this research? Is it that is it the largest known data set for clouded leopard? Or is the first study on habitat use of clouded leopards? We control for spatial autocorrelation, meaning that when you detect a clouded lab <coughs> at one camera trap, the next camera trap nearby next to it that detects the clouded leopard might not might be correlated because it might be the same clouded leopard. And the last one is it because we use the data to predict occupancy across peninsular Malaysia. So what do you think? Which of the following is not a novel part of this research? BC. Give you 20 seconds <coughs> so everyone can think about it. And five, four, three, two, one, thanks up. So, multiple answers um, from five C's, then we have two, three B's, and then three D's, and two, three A's. So we have C as the majority. So that's your vote. Well, the answer is that B is incorrect. It's not the first study on the habitat use. Oh, the, you. the rest was, were novel. It's the largest known data set for clouded leopards. Yes, 890. We controlled for spatial autocorrelation because current methods of occupancy or common methods of analyzing habitat use seldom do this and we use the data to predict the, the habitat use of the linkages and across the forest patches in Malaysia. So I'm going to start deforestation. Unfortunately, you might have to find an alternate path later. So you can go this way or this way. Good. So methods. To do this, I want you to see what is the method that I did not adopt. So QGIS is a spatial analysis software where we obtain the covariance, meaning that um, this camera trap is this distance away from the drainage and is at this elevation and it has this amount of forest around it. So QGIS is a spatial analysis software. We want to obtain this environmental covariance. R. R is the statistical software that we analyze, we look at detection rate on detection rate and how it's related to the covariance that we obtain from spatial analysis. Or was it that I asked a student to essentially do the first two? And the last one, none of the above. None of the above was not a method employed for data analysis. What do you think is the answer? And five, four, three, two, one. Okay, we have multiple D's and uh, five C's. Okay, so but D is dominating and one A. The answer is D. Well done. <laughs> the student was indeed slave to do the above two and subsequently passed on the data to me for further analysis. So I'm going to move your clouded levels over up onto the next platform. And here we chose this environmental <coughs> covariance. The first one, geographical ones that encompass elevation where the camera trap was found, how high it is on the mountain or hill 
distance to drainage, how far it is from the rivers and how far it is from the nearest big lake. Then we have habitat, how much of the forest is covered by, sorry, how much of the area is covered by forest and the degree of fragmentation. And we also have some others that is talking about distance to village, how far it is from the nearest kampong or how far it is to the nearest road. So each camel track has a value itself. So, your next question, based on the game, what you're seeing here, and which gives a clue, what did our results reveal? Is it that the habitat used for the, the, the cloud lab is actually preferring, uh, not preferring habitat, so it, habitat use decreased with increased distance from drainage, so they are actually preferring habitat nearer to the rivers, or is it the habitat use increased with increased elevation if it wants to go to the higher grounds, or habitat use increased with increased forest, the more forest there is, the better they like the forest, and habitat use decreased with increased forest cover. What do you think? Well, 20 seconds here. So what do we have? The answer is B and C. Well done. So I'm going to move the cloud and leopards over. They are moving actually towards higher elevation from this game. Um, high ele elevation, not, not a lot of people chose B. And increase in force cover, I did say at the beginning, if you did not get majority right, and I will move the forest, and no forest, no cloud and leopards. And this is exactly what we found. When the elevation goes higher, they are more likely to use the habitat. So they actually prefer somewhere that is higher. And the further away you are from drainage, the further away you are from the river itself, the more it is using the habitat. So what this might suggest, we're not sure the reason, is that when you go nearer the rivers, there are more human activity, and therefore it deters or might put off the cloud leopard. We also found that the area around the camel trap, if it's covered more by the forest, is more likely to use it. And here, this is disconnected core area density. It's uh, slightly complicated. What we have there on top, you see that core area, that's one core area per unit area. So you have <coughs> one here. And the one below, which is small little core area per unit area, is higher number of disconnected core area, the value is here. So what this means is that if you have this type of habitat, it's actually preferring it. But don't be mistaken by that we need to go and cut up the forest into small little patches of core area. Um, another study has shown that the clouded leopard is not deterred by forest age. They show that the forest age, when they cut down the trees, it allows for new trees or saplings or small young plants to grow, attracting somebody a wild boar and therefore attracting the leopards. So it's not deterred, okay? It's not discouraged by forest age. So we use all these results to predict the habitat use across peninsular Malaysia. This is Singapore here, we had to put it down here. So the darker blue it is, the more preferred the habitat. You can see here the central area is very high elevation. You can see that it's very good habitat for the cloud and leopard. What does the black line mean? Is what we have the central forest fund, a master plan proposed by the government to reduce forest loss, but it's again from paper. We see later that a lot of these areas are currently being lost um, due to habitat um, modification. So, habitat overall average occupancy, meaning what is the probability of the habitat being used? 49.3, meaning that about half the pixels are good habitat for the cloud leopards. And we see within the central forest spine, the one that is demarcated by the black lines, the habitat is a little bit more favored, okay, better, 
than that outside the central forest spine. On closer examination, we look at the linkages. Linkages are ones that connect forest patches. And you can see that this linkage here is not too bad, right? Because it's, it's uh, quite blue, but the white part is, is not even forested in the first place. And this linkage is not doing too good because you can see the white parts encompass most of it. And this linkage here is even more uh, heterogeneous or different in terms of uh, darker blue here and then very light blue in the middle. So, and then we have another linkage that connects the biggest forest complex in Balloon and Tumango, okay? This is the largest protected forest complex in Malaysia, and this is actually a road that cuts it. And you see that this linkage proposed has a lot of white patches. That's fine, we understand this partly because of the road, but we look at when there's a forest patch, what type of occupancy or habitat preference that is. So a preliminary analysis of 24 out of 37 of the proposed linkage here, we see that the percentage of linkage area that is forested, remember that we need forest for cloud levels, and the other one is the mean predicted occupancy. So this is a question for you. Are the linkages on average good conditions in terms of forest cover and predicted occupancy? Is it no, yes, or you can't tell? So I have a glance and see whether it's good numbers or bad numbers. And five, four, three, two, one. Let's look at what we've got. M, multiple B, a few A, multiple C, okay? So, my tip is, I did mention that the overall average habitat use was 49.3%. So I used that as a cutoff. And you can see here, these are the statistics. Well, the answer is actually no, they are not very good conditions. Well, forest cover, for most of them, 17 out of 24 linkages were below 50%, and occupancy below 49.3 is the average. Okay, 14 out of 24 were not doing very well. A lot of these levels were actually below 49.3%. So, unfortunately, you got it wrong. So I'm start deforestation. <laughs> I'm not going to cut this tree. So our further studies, well, we only look at environmental variables. What about prey density? Yes, we did not uh, look at that. So prey density that we can see here, we can correlate with detections, and as well as other uh, carnivores that we have, like the leopard and the leopard cat, and see whether it determines whether the habitat is preferred by the cloud leopard. To take home, let's see what we've got. The density of cloud leopards in peninsular Malaysia is low. Cloud leopard occupancy or habitat use is dependent on interactions with other species. It is, we need more cloud leopards or further efforts should be made to reforest and enhance the habitat suitability of our linkages in peninsular Malaysia. I shouldn't say our, I'm Singaporean, sorry, not Malaysian. And five, four, three, two, one. This should be an easy one. So let's see what we've got. Why is there a B and a D? Is this, this is your bad thing again. Is your multiple choice idea? We did not look at other species that was for prospects for further studies. So the answer is D. Okay, so we established that the linkages are not very good or, good or not in a good condition. So I'm going to move them here and here. Great, so I'll move on specifically to my study side now. We've seen the bigger picture. And let's look at what my study in Ulumuda encompass. This is understanding where the clouded leopards are and when they come up relative to other species. And the research on clouded leopards has four different questions. This is my study site. 
where and when does the plot of leopard appear? And unfortunately, Ulumoda, despite being an important water catchment area, there's habitat modification in terms of logging. Kedah is not a well-to-do state, and to meet up to their revenue demands, they are cutting down the forest, and each tree itself costs about 1,000, say, 3,000 3, Okay. Do flexible versus hard grid differ in your inability to <coughs> estimate density? So, grid is about where you put the camera traps. Hard means you go there and you put it there, you fix it there. So, one, one camera grid is one in which the camera traps are separated by one kilometer apart. Flexible means you go there and then you move around, you find suitable spots, you might vary a little bit. So, that's slightly different. So, I'm not going to answer. Um, some of the questions here today because the study is still ongoing but we'll see what we find and this is an interesting topic leeches, they are only useful for blood sampling because I really don't like them and so you can cut off the mouth parts and you can do the DNA analysis and it can reveal the wildlife in the forest it's an amazing technique so this is my study site here Okay next to the Thai border and here okay if you walk here you can walk into Thailand illegally without your passport so um, it's very close to Thailand indeed and in fact there's a lot of Thai poachers and illegal uh, forest people that are coming into the forest to take um, this uh, aga wood for making perfume aga wood smells really good um, and sometimes we see that my forest street, uh, sorry, the camera traps. Here we have two types of deployment fixed or flexible. Okay, fixed meaning the red one is like here, here, here. And you can see the green one is slightly more messy, right? You just find a suitable spot and you just place them. So we, we are able to collect more data as such. And here we come in, usually we take a two hour boat ride to the jetty and then come here. And then there's an ecotourism uh, chalet here that we put our camel traps and then we walk into the forest and come up. It takes about four to five days to complete one. And then we go again, or we go again. Mm. Okay? So, there's an interesting discovery at Ulu Muda. Um, recently we published a paper about this. So, that's a question for you. What's so special about it? Uh, is it because we found the cloud leopards there, only there? Or is it because we found the spotted leopards only there, okay, and nowhere else in Peninsula Malaysia? Or is it we found the market cat there and nowhere else in Peninsula Malaysia? Or is it there's nothing special about it? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. There was a clue in what I said just now. Okay, and five, four, three, two, one, and up. Wow, this is the most colorful answer ever. <laughs> so we have five, five B's, okay, we have three A's and a four A's, so have three D's and two C's. Clouded leopards were found throughout Peninsula Venetia. We saw in that study earlier, right? I said that we took data from all over Malaysia. Marble cat is very common. Okay? The only thing rare about Ulu Muda was that throughout Peninsula Malaysia, the leopard is melanistic, meaning entirely black. And the only one that we found was spotted, and in our area that was only spotted, no black leopards at all, is but Ulu Muda. Okay? And another site slightly south, but there was a bit more time ago. Um, and and also we did not have any tigers. All other sites had tigers, we do not have tigers, and the leopard is spotted. We do not have black leopards. So all other sites itself, so the answer is uh, B, you guys got it right as a majority. So I'm going to move you here, here, and we see what we have here. So. This is the site where there's only spotted leopards, which is my study site. You can see all the black dots are where they only found melanistic or the black version. Um, the 
the, the, this wholesome one that we have here is no detection, so no leopards down there. And here's the other site where they found spotted leopard that was in 2013. <coughs> so, results of our analysis this is Ulu Muda. Okay. Cloud leopards density largely concentrated here, and here the river runs across here. Okay, so there was two subpopulations of cloud leopard in the forest. The leopard density, one that is only concentrated in the deeper ends and in this area, is really, really difficult to track. The, basically, the, the hills are like this. And at one point in time, we just like, we just sat down and just slide down the forest floor. We gave up climbing or <laughs> going down those slopes. And the marble cat itself is very evenly distributed throughout Peninsular Malaysia. And sorry, throughout Ulumuda. That's not Peninsular Malaysia, that's Ulumuda, my research site. Alright? Good. So, this is done by one of my <coughs> students. Um, here we see different analytical methods. Do not be brought down by it. We're just comparing the accuracy of different methods. We usually trust the last two. One that takes into account the space, okay, and gives you a density estimate. Here we, on average, was about two individuals per 100 kilometers squared. Okay, so that was the density estimate of the cloud leopard. So, based on what we have seen, and based on what I've told you about putting the camera traps and collecting data, what else can we investigate with the current data? When leopards and clouded leopards overlap in space, do they come out at different times? Do they separate in terms of time? Which analytical method is the most accurate for density estimate? Or is it, what is the density of golden cats in our study area? Or the last one, what is the habitat use of the clouded leopard? That's a question for you, based on the information that we've just discussed. and three Ds, well, let's see what the answer is. The answer is that we have an overlap in space. We saw two populations of uh, leopards, and only one population was overlapping with the leopards. Leopards are bigger than cloud leopards. So the first answer is A. When they overlap in space, do they separate in terms of their time, in terms of foraging, because they eat almost the same thing. The other question was D, was the habitat use of the cloud leopard. So I'll accept it as a majority right because it's you know D plus A and then <laughs> the answer. Okay, so remove them. This guy is actually rich its ideal location, but this guy is probably going to die because he hasn't reached that at the end of the game. I'd like to thank the following people uh, who has helped me a lot in my uh, work. Um, they look like they are taking photo shoots uh, for magazines. Um, Daniel has helped me a lot with the big peninsula Malaysia uh, analysis. This one is more for my specific <coughs> sites where you see where the cloud leopards or leopards is distributed. And Rian and Alpha are current students that are working for the temporal patterns, which is when they come out um, during, their, during the day. And John is helping me a lot in the field. So I therefore will end my first section se session of the talk and I will come in questions. <coughs> yes. The melanistic clouded leopard, what, uh, how are they compared percentage wise to the normal? So the uh, ones? It's, it's not melanistic clouded, it's melanistic leopard. Just the leopards. But I've seen a melanistic clouded leopard. Really? Yes. Okay. We haven't had any melanistic yeah. clouded leopards. Boat Tier State. Where? You know Boat Tier State? Cameron Highland? Yeah. Okay. And they have natural uh, nature to Malaysia, they have a place where you can stay. Oh, wow. And I went down to the bottom of that state. Mm -hmm. that was actually tracked down to um, Orang Asli place. Uh -huh. And I was sitting actually with a scope looking at the uh, 
bomb it because it was playing with fruit, you know, really? throwing up. And then wow. I would feel something, you know, when something stare at you, you look. Mm -hmm. And when there was pictures of the um, moth, uh, Atlas moth, yeah. this big cat was standing looking at me. <laughs> and, and I just lifted my eye just very little. I don't want to see it better. And boom, boom. Three That's jumps gone. Experience. And you know what was the most impressive? What? The tail. The tail is very Yeah, it's very big. Yeah. And then I was scratching my head because I've seen leopards in a while. Mm -hmm. I said, this is not a leopard. What is it? It's a cloud leopard. The melanistic. Yeah, melanistic. Like no cloud-like patterns at all. It's no. I mean, of course, it was quite late in the day. It was mm. probably around 6 o'clock. So okay. So, uh, the I've problem. yet to know about melanistic cloud leopards before, but I love yeah. this <laughs> With more of what I did also, what I did also, I didn't have anything to measure. I took the bird book uh -huh. and I said, the nose was here, the tail started here, and the tail finished, and I flipped it and then I made a mark. Wow. And then I looked at it and. Uh, they are charismatic, they are very, very cute creatures. Yes. 20 to 30. So I just scratched my head when I saw it. You know? Yeah. And then for quite a while until it came out, the mm -hmm. book about. Uh, 